He's a comedian, actor, Emmy award-winning producer, and current host of Larry Wilmore Black on the Air. Please welcome back, returning champion. Yes. The one, the only, Larry Wilmore. Hey, John, good to see you in your bunker. Thank bunker, you. Hunkered in the bunker. Hunkered in the bunker. <laughs> Let's get into it. What a week. Splash Mountain announced they would be removing all references to the Song of the South on that ride and reframing it around the princess and the frog. Disney already knew that was problematic because they pulled the film like years ago. You couldn't rent it out, you couldn't, but they thought they would sneak the ride just right by everything. You know, if people are going fast and they're on the roller coaster, they won't see like, eh, mammy, you know, going by or <laughs> Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox, you know. Right, well, they, 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 as they were opening Splash Mountain in the late 80s, they were pulling Song of the South back. Then they started deleting reference to Song of the South from the ride. But they, it's, what I find so strange about it is that, like, they have a lot of intellectual property. Nobody was, ma like, Splash Mountain is a log that gets wet. Right. You could really apply a lot of different ideas to it. <laughs> like, right. it doesn't need to exactly. be about the, like, why do you say, what is the, what does uh, Southern plantation life have to do with a log flume? Like, why, right. why did you need it to be that? Right. Yeah, at least it's not like Lynch Mountain, you know. And then they, <laughs> it's like, you know what? This Lynch Mountain, I don't, I don't know. It's a fun ride. I don't know why people want us to change it. It's just, it's something that happened. We didn't do it, you know, but it's part then, of our heritage. Then 2020... Uh, after careful reflection and consult consultation with many members of our team, you've come no. to discover that for a lot of people, Lynch Mountain is an offensive term. Apparently, it's a bad thing. So it's now Antebellum Mountain, and I hope people enjoy Antebellum Mountain. Yeah. Antebellum was pre-the war. What's wrong with people? We're not even at the war yet. It's pre-war. It's not about anything. It's about gazebos, mostly. It's mostly yeah. about gazebos and frilly white dresses. That's really the focus. It's the beautiful, how can I say birth of our nation you know <laughs> uh there was a uh there was a um a medieval times knockoff in myrtle beach south carolina and in it instead of it being different nights it, mm. uh, on horseback it was the north versus the south wow and the south won <laughs> in the uh in the horse in the in the horse riding competition. Oh, sad. Uh, uh, back to Disney. I do think, Larry, uh, that Disney is beginning to ask questions to which they will not like the answers. Uh, the Little Mermaid is the story of a girl who sees a hot boy one time and disfigures herself and gives up her voice to seduce him. It works, and the only person who faces consequences is the drag queen who was right to to hate King Triton's underwater dictatorial regime. Larry, do you know what that's called? It's not an it's not an aquatic regime. What is it's it? an auto it's an auto aquatic regime. Nice. <laughs> I like how you did that. Meanwhile, Mufasa in The Lion King is a dictator. He's a dictator who preserves power with a cult of personality. Now, I'm not a fan of Scar. Okay? I'm not a Zar, Zar, Scar apologist. Right. But I but I reject the idea that Mufasa, Scar, or Simba has a legitimate claim to that throne, all right? Have an election. Let a zebra run. Yeah. Why is it pre why is it predetermined that this familial lineage of lions control Pride Rock? Mufasa shows Simba everything the light touches is yours. And they call why? it they call it Pride Rock, but have they told us the full story of Pride in the Lion King? I don't think so. <laughs> Who threw the first brick at Pride Rock, Larry? <laughs> this is what I'm saying, you know. Uh, I think there's a Stonewall story inside of Lion King that has not been told yet. And I'm waiting, yeah. That's what I'm waiting to see personally. Yeah. Maybe things with Simba and Nala aren't as good as they seem. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, Beauty exactly. and the Beast yeah. is the story of a hostage who falls in love with her kidnapper because yeah. a witch tried to teach the kidnapper a lesson about being kind by torturing that kidnapper's household staff. She yeah. makes the prince ugly, but she turns human beings into inanimate objects and their only crime was working there. And then, right. Lumi and then Lumiere and Cogsworth and the tea kettle and the cup, they all go along with it. And then yep. when they're turned back into people, they stay in their jobs. Yeah. They stay at work. And at the heart of it is a heartwarming story about bestiality, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, it's like you know, it says in the Wizard of Oz, if Dorothy fucked the Cowardly Lion. It's like I don't think that's what this story should be about, honestly. <laughs> The number of people that have put that into their search terms is probably chilling. The yeah. other, it's it's also they um so when they turn, so so these people who are at work just happen to be at work that day. Maybe some of them should have taken a day off. I'm just a candlestick. I'm just lighting shit up. Man. I am defined by my job where I work for this prince. They're then captive for years to punish this guy for being a jerk who yeah. kidnaps a woman. When right. they're finally turned back into people, they're the same age as when they went in. Because right. the cup, Chip, is still a little boy. Which means they were in that castle frozen in time. Did, they, did their families age? Where did their families think they were? Did they miss funerals? Did they miss birthdays? The world yeah. went on without them while they were trapped, all for the crime of working for a shitty boss. I think we're going to need like a making of a murderer type of Beauty and the Beast deconstruction. Somebody needs to go into that castle with some cameras and figure this shit out because there are, I agree with you. There's way too many unanswered questions. Um, I agree. As far as I'm concerned, do your best. Go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, uh, what's that? What's the line in that song? Life is hell. It's life is so unnerving for a servant who is not serving. It's very, um, really presumes a lot about yeah. the motivations of these people. Yeah. It's very, yeah. It's very pro. Uh, I don't know. Feudalism. Yeah, it is. Here's what I want. All right, Aladdin. Oh, so hard. They deal with castles and princes and kings and this whole. One idea. of these times, whether it's you know we have Sleeping Beauty, Aladdin, Cinderella. Just once, it would be nice if the happy ending in one of these movies was a restoration of like democratic civic institutions. <laughs> <laughs> like the well, prince has decided I to hold elections and step down. Like the end of the movie, we got health care. <laughs> <laughs> They've set up I... a blue. There's a truth and reconciliation commission in Pride Rock to discover why these species have gone along with this dictatorial regime for so long. Yes, finally, pre-existing conditions. Finally. <laughs> <laughs>